Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again, and I hope everyone is enjoying their holidays. I certainly am. I wanted to post the third part of my interview with Charles Guillaume, the CTO of Ledger. In the third part, I ask him questions about the new Trezor Safe 7 and the architecture behind it to get his take on one of his biggest competitors. So I think you'll find his insights very interesting. I'm also going to put links in the description to parts one and two of the interview as well. I think you'll find those very interesting also. So happy holidays, everyone, and enjoy this interview. Now I want to uh, just talk about uh, the Trezor uh, specifically. Um, the Trezor uh, has for a while been using a secure element chip that they uh, say is NDA free. Um, and I guess it, let's let's put this in the whole argument of uh, open source versus closed source. Mm -hmm. uh, the Descent wallet, uh, I had a chance to talk to uh, their uh, CBO, uh, is completely closed source. I wasn't aware of this. Uh, most other hardware wallets claim well, we're 100% open source, uh, but obviously if they're using a secure element, then it's not completely open source. Uh, but yeah, let's talk about uh, the NDA-free secure element chip. That doesn't mean it's open source, does it? Uh, no, 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 not at all, not at all. Um, and this is something uh, Twilio is saying, um, and they claim something that I think is a little weird. Uh, they, they said something uh, that when when they understood they needed a secure element, they started to evaluate different uh, providers. And uh, I think this is thick, like the previous CTO a long time ago, that is uh, saying that uh, they found a vulnerability on some library of um, the one of the secure element they uh, evaluated. And they wanted to report this vulnerability to the vendor and the vendor, uh, like, um, wanted to force him to uh, sign an NDA to uh, report the vulnerability or this kind of thing. So, and this is the reason why uh, they wanted absolutely uh, to have a secure element NDA free. Um, so I, I feel this story is a little uh, weird. I don't know if what is true and what's the, what's the bottom of the story to, to, to be honest, but this is the reason why uh, they wanted to, uh, to go uh, in, in that direction. Um, However, uh, the secure element they used, which is uh, NGA3, um, is completely closed source, like uh, mm. from the hardware itself uh, to all the code that is running on the hardware, uh, all of this is uh, completely uh, closed source. And even Trezor has absolutely no idea on what's running mm. uh, inside uh, this uh, secure element. So this is something that uh, we must keep in mind. And also, even on the MCU they are using, where they load their uh, open source um, um, firmware, uh, this MCU is not open source at all. Hmm. Like, um, this is, um, the, by the way, this is also ST Microelectronics that is uh, creating and manufacturing this uh, MCU. Hmm. Not, not a single line of the, the RTL, like the design, the, the code that is, uh, creating this MCU is open source. We have no idea uh, what is uh, what is uh, what this circuit is doing. Like we just uh, read some data sheet, and it seems to do what they claim what they claim it to do. But at the end, you have no idea. And this is for the hardware itself, but also uh, for the low-level libraries that are embedded uh, inside the MCU, because. Uh, inside the, the MCU is a design and it's, it's made of code and so on. And then um, and then it's manufactured. And after the manufacturing, they will load uh, different low level libraries uh, in the flash or in some ROM. And those libraries are just running code uh, for the developers to facilitate the access to the flash, the access to the peripherals. And none of this is open source. So. When you have this in mind, uh, you can uh, you can think about what does it mean to uh, to, to claim like 100% uh, open source, uh, which at the end is not really the case. And for also uh, they wanted to they decided with um, 
the other company of Satoshi Labs, uh, Tropic Square. Uh, they decided to build their own secure element, uh, saying uh, now we, uh, we will be able to create like a, a fully open source secure element and so on, um, which, which could seem a great idea. But when you, when you think a little bit more uh, closely, uh, it's a little bit uh, wishful thinking. And I will tell you for, for three different reasons. Um, the first one is it's, it's incredibly difficult to create secure element, like meaning real secure element. Like there's, uh, there's big company, ST Microelectronics, Samsung, NXP, Infineon. They are doing this for 40 years. Mm. They, they, they are spending uh, like billions every year for, to raise the security of it. They have patents everywhere and they are, this is, this is their job. So thinking that you can like match this level of security while cre creating a new startup and so on, you can, you can be very good at executing and so on. At the end, it's, it's quite a challenge and you have the patents that will prevent you to uh, use the most efficient uh, countermeasure and so on. So uh, that might be a, a little bit uh, uh, tricky. And the, the second reason, which is uh, for me uh, even more uh, convincing, that is wishful thinking, is the following. Uh, why, why do we like open source? We like open source because you, you go on GitHub, you clone the repository on your uh, computer, then you will audit the code, analyze every, everything, and when you are happy with, with, with it, uh, you will compile it if it's um, some some code that you compile, and you will run it on your machine. And then you say, "Okay, I'm I'm fine. I have like uh, some guarantee that the code that is running is open source and it does what what I want, and so on." Like very few people are doing this, but this is this is possible. So uh, it when it comes to hardware, okay, let's say you go on GitHub repository, analyze the code of uh, Tropic Square, which is the um, manufacturer of the of the secure element you analyze this code so first of all a small part of the design is open source most of the design is not open source so it's something I, I need to say but let's say everything is open source you have on one side this open source code on the other side in your hand the circuit mm -hmm. how do you know that the circuit matches actually matches with the code you audited it's simply impossible like uh, mm -hmm. this, this is simply impossible so on one side, you have code that you have audited and, and you're like, okay, I like the code and I think uh, it's well designed and there, there is no backdoor and so on. And the other side, you have a circuit and you have absolutely no idea, no guarantees that this circuit actually matches with um, the code that you audited. So at the end, it defeats a little bit the purpose. Uh, you have a circuit that is probably far less secure than uh, what Samsung, uh, ST Microelectronics, NXP, Infineon, uh, is doing because this is uh, this is a core value proposition and so on. And secondly, you don't even have the guarantees that you wanted to have at the first place, like meaning that there is no backdoor and you analyze the code and you are fi fine with it. You don't have you don't even have this guarantee. So that's why I think it's a little bit um, wishful thinking. At the end, there is an element of trust when you are using a hardware wallet or even even any kind of software. There is there is a there is a, a part of trust and thinking that it's possible to create completely trustless systems with wallets is wishful thinking. Hmm. Yeah, um, they don't even say that it's uh, the, the Tropic One is open source. I think a lot of people will just assume that. Uh, they say it's the first auditable secure element chip. Well, uh, as you mentioned, the end user is not going to be able to audit a secure element chip because... Uh, I can't compile and run code and then uh, manufacture. Exactly. <laughs> but they say that uh, some companies or some researchers uh, will be able to audit the code that have the proper tools and then that they can uh, report their results and make them public if necessary. Um, do you really think that there's going to be uh, researchers out there that are going to be willing to spend the time and energy to audit this secure element chip and uh, make recommendations? Maybe, I don't know. It, it really depends. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe. Uh, yeah, but... I don't know. Uh, in terms of secure elements, um, recently there was a group of researchers that I, I know personally for my previous experience that have found a vulnerability on uh, in one Infineon uh, chip. Um, and uh, 
and the attack it was called uh, Uclick, uh, so that was the name of the of the attack, mm -hmm. and um, and they were able to uh, to report this vulnerability and also to publish on it. So that's why I feel it's not, it's not like um, forbidden to do research on secure element. It's, uh, so this NGA free thing is uh, is a little weird to to me, to be honest. Right. Um, one other uh, feature that they're uh, talking about with the new Trezor Safe 7 is uh, they have, um, I think they call it open source secure Bluetooth encryption, um, like no one else was using encryption before with their Bluetooth. Um, it's my understanding that even if it's normal Bluetooth, uh, the messages that are being sent back and forth are already encrypted. Uh, so is that exactly? Yeah, is that really a great new feature that they've invented or implemented this open source Bluetooth encryption on their device? Yeah. So to to be honest, I didn't dig into the details of their implementation. So my opinion is high level, let's say. Mm -hmm. um, so the BLE protocols uh, already implements um, like uh, authentication you have like the, this uh, six digits that you that you need to uh, to pair the, the device and as soon as the, the device is paired like the two devices are paired then everything is encrypted uh, on the line but but furthermore we don't really care about this encryption like um, if like, if what is what is passing on the BLE link, Everything is public. You you are sending like a whole transaction to be signed to the device. The device is signing it, and then the device sends back um, a signed transaction. So this is what going through this uh, BLE link. So we don't really care this link to be encrypted. And and by the way, it's already encrypted. <laughs> so <laughs> so I don't really get the point of adding another la la layer of encryption. And furthermore, so this is where I don't know uh, how it works exactly. Furthermore, if you add another layer of encryption, that means that the integration of the BLE device will be more tricky uh, because when you will connect it to, I don't know, to, to uh, Chrome, for instance, using web BLE, it might not be compatible with Chrome uh, because Chrome does not embed the other part, the other side of the encryption uh, mm. protocol. So. This part, I, I don't know the details, so I, I'm, I'm assume, assuming, but there might be this kind of issue. Right, yeah. Uh, it seems like a lot of uh, not really battle-hardened protocols they're putting out there. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, the last question that I wanted to ask you um, is about the secure screen technology of the Ledger device, uh, opposed to others. Um, I don't think that there's any other manufacturers that actually send output directly from a secure element to the screen. They're all using um, MCUs uh, to run their yeah. screens. Uh, mm -hmm. are, are you, is there anyone else out there using anything close to secure screen technology that you're aware of? Um, not not to my knowledge. And, and by the way, it's even worse than this i think there is no other like wallet manufacturer that is implementing its own like operating system or logic uh, inside the secure element all the the, the hardware wallet that are embedding a secure element use first most of them this is not secure element by the way they are just claiming it's secure element like there is no certification or, or things like that mm -hmm. and secondly they are using them as a secure memory they are just putting a secret inside and all the logic all the application all the wallet itself is implemented in the non-secure mcu so this is really the model so so it's it's really they are really far from having like secure display secure display is the is a, a step further Right. And, you know, one of the biggest complaints I hear about Ledger is that they are not open source. Um, and I don't believe anybody can be fully open source on a piece of hardware. Yeah, exactly. This is what I was trying to explain uh, before. And, and furthermore, like all the application, uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, all of them are like open source. Mm. A big bunch of the operating system is open source, but there are some 
parts of the operating system that is not open source. And the reason why is that we have an NDA with ST Microelectronics. Mm. And this NDA prevents us to explain to the world what are the great like um, um, countermeasures they uh, embedded inside the secure element because this is their IP. Uh, and they, they have worked like 40 years, invested billions mm. into uh, creating them. And if we open source everything, we will explain to the world how their secure element is working and what are the countermeasures. And this is something they don't want. So this is, this is the real reason why. Otherwise, everything would be open source. Well, I want to thank you so much for your time today, Charles. I really appreciate it. Um, it's always a pleasure to have uh, time to speak with you and pick your brain. Um, I'm sure my viewers will get a lot out of this. And uh, once again, I'd like to thank you for t giving me your time. Cool. Uh, thank you for having me. And, and th thank you for what you are doing for the ecosystem. Uh, because... We, we need like more uh, training, more um, awareness, um, because it's a complex world with plenty of attackers everywhere. So uh, education is key. And I think you are doing a, a great job at this. Thank you. I appreciate it.